And today is August the 30th, 2003. It's a Saturday, and we're at the hangar belonging to Captain Frank Hancock. Eastern Airlines retired. Uh, his grandson, Glenn, last name is Hancock. Hancock. Glenn and Frank are building an airplane, and Frank, we'll get, we'll get into other stuff, but exactly what is the name of that airplane? It's called a HATS, an H-A-T-Z. H-A-T-Z mm -hmm. is just a hat. Is that the name of the guy that designed no, it? No, uh, that isn't the name of the fellow that designed it. Uh, uh, right offhand, I couldn't tell you what his name was, but he's the one that designed the Kelly D Kelly before D. this. Uh-huh, Kelly D. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, y'all are almost getting this airplane ready to fly, aren't Yeah, you? it's getting close. Just, yeah. just a few little minor things that uh, we waited the other day. and uh -huh. uh, came in. How did it come in on the way? It came out real well. It uh, it only weighs 100 pounds mm -hmm. more than the ones without a starter and a generator and with a smaller engine. Okay, this has an electrical system. Right. Okay, well, that, that came out pretty good. Not bad at all. Uh -huh. So it's, uh, and the other, and the one didn't. Yep, yeah. and uh, when do you think you might going to do your first flight? Well, it's getting close. It's getting close. It's getting close. We've, uh, we've got to paint the numbers on it yet, mm -hmm. and uh, the FAA has got to come and inspect it. I see. And as soon as that's over, it'll be ready to fly. Okay. And uh, Glenn's going to fly. Well, one of us is going to fly. One of them is. Uh, Glenn's chomping at the bit, though, yeah, I understand. He wants to fly. He's tearing at it. <laughs> well, is this the first airplane you ever built? No, no. If we fly this airplane, it'll be the seventh one that I've been involved in. Mm-hmm. Oh, goodness. Uh, Eastern Airlines Captain Al Harrison and I built a pitch. Uh -huh. Took us 14 months to 14. start it and fly it. That's pretty fast. That it? was fast, but right. at that time we were working for Eastern and we worked on it every day we were off. Uh -huh. We worked on it. Now this one has taken four years. Uh -huh. Four so, years versus 14 months. Uh-huh. When did y'all build it, roughly? Oh, back in the 60s. 60s. Oh, yeah, you we were young built, guys then, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah. We built the pits in, uh, in the 60s. Is that and, your uh, first airplane? That was the first one that we built from scratch. Uh-huh. And at the same time we were building it, we also rebuilt or re-modified a cub, a J3 cub, uh -huh. made a re-modified J3 cub out of it, uh -huh. and we still have that airplane. You still do that? Is that the clip wing cub? That's that, the uh, clip wing cub. Oh my goodness. You and Al, so you bought Al out of it or something? Yes, Al moved to Virginia. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of Virginia, that's where you're from, isn't it? Right. Up there around Richmond somewhere. A little place called Hopewell. Hopewell, and is there a VOR there? Got a, got a VOR in uh -huh. Hopewell, Virginia. Yeah, we all know where Hopewell is, and at least we know where the VOR is. <laughs> yeah, and then, then you got into flying strictly uh, as a teenager, or what? I started when I was about 13 years, 13 or 14 mm -hmm. years old. Going to the airport, mm -hmm. and you know the same thing that everybody's done. Right. Wash airplanes and mm -hmm. clean the office up, and maybe if you were lucky, somebody would give you a ride. Maybe let you hold on to the wheel a little mm -hmm. while, you know. But just the uh, just the usual mm -hmm. usual start. Mm -hmm. Is that when you met Al Harris? No. I didn't meet Al Harris till after the war was over. After the war. After the war, yeah. Okay, so uh, when were you born? 1924. 1924. So when the war started, you were 17, roughly. Roughly, I right. was 17. And you went out and joined the Navy, huh? 
took the uh, took the entrance examination for the Army Air Corps at the time, uh -huh. and I never heard from them. I never heard from them. Some of the boys that went over with me had already heard from the results, but I hadn't heard. Uh -huh. And I tried to find out about it, but I could not get an answer. Uh -huh. So it was getting close to the draft. Uh -huh. And uh, I told my mother, I said, Lord, I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and get in the Navy. I'd already had a little taste of the Army, and I didn't want to be in the in the walking army. Yeah, where? How did you have that taste? Just through the. In 1940, I was 16 years old. Uh huh. And at that time, they had a program called the CMTC. CMTC. The Citizens Military Training Camp. Uh huh. And uh, you had to be 17 to go. So my mother signed a paper saying I was 17 uh -huh. and I went to the last CMTC camp that they had. The war was You were really on. 16 though. I was 16. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I was too young to go. Mm -hmm. And that's when I found out that I didn't want to be in a walking army. Didn't I like walking army, huh? Okay, so then now you've uh, never heard from the Army Air Corps, and so you went to the Navy. I was in the Navy. I graduated from high school. I think, if my memory serves me right, on June the 3rd, 1943. 43. And on June the 9th, 1943, I was up at the Great Lakes Naval Training Station uh -huh. learning to be a sailor. Right, right. And what was your job in the Navy after you graduated? Uh, they sent me to what they call sonar school. That's sonar under, school. underwater submarine detection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and then you ended up on a destroyer or something? On a destroyer escort. Destroyer escort. We got uh, e. We got up to uh, New York. In uh, in November, early in November, and we went aboard the ship on November the twenty third, nineteen forty three. And that was a DE DE one eighty six. One eighty six, and the name was USS Swearer. S W E A R E R. And I believe there's something in your little email address about the square right. now. It's an email address. And you served on her for the remainder for, of the war? Uh, no, I was on her for 14 months. Uh -huh. uh, 13 to 14 months I was on the, uh -huh. I was on the square. Uh -huh. And uh, they came out with a, with a bulletin that uh, they posted on our ship that Anybody that could pass the entrance examination and the physical for the Naval Air Corps would be sent home immediately to begin the Air Corps training, Naval Air Corps training. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, I think 16 of us from my ship went over to the Marine Air Station called Pelly Lou, and I don't know how to spell it. Yeah, that's Pelly Lou and, uh, for the battle. And uh, that's where we took the uh, the entrance examination and the physical to get in the Naval Air Corps, and I think eight of us passed both of them. Mm -hmm. And we went back to the ship and just, we just awaited to the time that uh, that we could get off the ship and come home. Okay. Then what happened? They put me on a, a, of course I tried to get on a, a flight coming home, but it was impossible to get a, get a flight out of the Pacific. Mm -hmm. So they put me on a Dutch passenger cargo vessel called the Clip Fontaine. Mm -hmm. 
and it took us nearly a month to get back to the States on that ship, but that's how I came back to the States. Or did you go to the Navy training? Gave me a gave me a twenty one day leave mm -hmm. and I went home and then they sent me back to California to San Luis Obispo. Mm -hmm. And I spent a year in college at Cal Poly mm -hmm. University out there. Mm -hmm. Well, what were you training to be out there at Cal Poly? But we were in the Naval Pilots Training Navy School. Naval Pilot Training School. Mm -hmm. Okay, did they, you end up in the airplane somewhere? No. They, uh, from there, they sent me to the University of Georgia to pre flight school. Uh -huh. And uh, the war ended while I was in pre flight school in the University of Georgia. Mm -hmm. They immediately released all of the V 5 program. That was Naval Aviation Cadets. Uh -huh. But I was going through as an enlisted pilot. Mm -hmm. What I was, my title was SNAP. A student naval aviation pilot. Mm -hmm. And the reason for this was I had attained a third class rating while I was on the ship, mm -hmm. and they allowed me to keep my third class rating. Mm -hmm. It didn't amount to much, but you didn't have to stand in line to. To eat, you didn't have to stand yeah. in line to get paid, you know. Mm -hmm. But when they sent the V5 people home, they didn't send any of the enlisted pilots home. They kept us, and they sent the enlisted pilots at the University of Georgia to the University of Iowa. Mm -hmm. And that's where I finished pre-flight school. And from there, they sent me to the Naval uh, Flight Training School at Milliken, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And what are you doing at Milliken? Well, we flew Stearmans, and that's where, I, that's where I say that I learned to fly, although I'd flown a little bit. Prior to uh, coming in the service, did you uh, get your Navy wings? I I didn't get my wings. I from there I went down to Pensacola to advanced training, and uh, I don't know. I was uh, I like to fly, but I would have soon flown at nine o'clock or ten o'clock in the morning as I would five in the morning, mm -hmm. and that's what we. We had to do. We had to get up at four o'clock mm -hmm. and be out on the flight line at five o'clock. Yeah, when I was in the Air Force, we had to but do things like that. My wife was at home, and she was going to have a baby, mm -hmm. and she wanted me to come home. Mm -hmm. So I applied my my points that I had accumulated while I was out in the Pacific, and they immediately sent me back to Memphis and discharge me. Mm -hmm. and, and, okay, so uh, what did you, so you ended up, up at, back at Richmond working? Yeah, oh, well, oh, working well. for, at that time it was Hummel Ross Fiber Corporation. It was a paper mill. Mm -hmm. And later while I was there, they sold out the Continental Can Company. And when I came with Eastern, I was working for Now, when you were at this paper mill, you weren't flying. Through, that's where I got all of my ratings. Were you flying for the paper mill? No, I was, uh, I had a part-time job flying for the, for the general manager of the mill. Uh, but your full-time job was a ground job in the right, mill. I was a, a carpenter in the carpenter shop. Mm-hmm. Or a manager, okay. Now, uh, then you, then when did you come with Eastern? Well, 
Eastern Airlines is the, after I got my ratings, Eastern Airlines is the only airline that I ever applied to for a job. Mm -hmm. And they hired me so quick that I don't know whether I could have backed out of it or not if yeah. I wanted to. What was that, by 1955? Or uh, 1955, I think. 1955, data hire Eastern. Okay, now we're getting into the stuff that the guy's going to be interested in. And you already knew Al Harris somewhere along in here, didn't you? Al Harris, at that time, I was working part-time by Airway Flying Service over at Richmond. Uh -huh. And Al had been their chief flight instructor. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the time that I was getting my ratings, I didn't have any way to study. I just, he just had to sort of do everything by rote. And if I didn't do well on one of my tests, I always went over to Airway and that's where Al Harris was working. And I would be in his ear to find out what I had missed mm -hmm. on my test. He was quite helpful mm -hmm. in straightening me out on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But he was working at Aero Flying Service. He was you working for Airway Flying Service. Airway. And shortly thereafter, Eastern hired him. So he got hired before He was you. hired before me. About 1950, Al was hired about 1953, give or take, it might have been 54, mm -hmm. but somewhere around there, mm -hmm. Al was hired. Mm -hmm. And so then you got hired on with Eastern in 55, and, uh, and they checked you out as what, a DC-3 co-pilot? No, first thing I flew was uh, after I went to school in Miami, it was mm -hmm. a mark. Martin 404. And where were you assigned? Atlanta. I, they, uh, I was fortunate to come to Atlanta. Uh-huh. Well, you were fortunate. Yeah. Being a southern guy like <laughs> me. <laughs> hey. I'm trying to hit the point on the seat. All right. Okay, so uh, what, what, what did your experience after you got to Atlanta on the Martin 404? Just, just, just moved up the it line. Was, uh, it, it was the greatest job that any country boy ever had. Yeah. It was just, I flew with some of the greatest fellows back in those days. They're still my friends. Uh -huh. A lot of them have passed away, but yeah. they were a great bunch of fellows. That was a different world back then. Different like, world. Man, was a different world. Most of those fellows had flown in the Navy and the, and the Air Force and were already seasoned pilots mm -hmm. when they came with these. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, did you go from right seat in the Martin to captain or? No, I, I, flew, uh, I flew the Martin and I flew the, uh, of course I, I flew the Convair and I flew all of the models of the Constellation, and the, I flew the DC-7, mm -hmm. and the... Uh, this is all as co-pilot. All as co-pilot, mm -hmm. and the 727, and uh, the Electra, and the DC-9. And you hit them all, didn't you? I hit them all uh -huh. that we had here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And then you... They uh, sent me to, uh, when it looked like I might get the fly captain, they sent me down and I uh, got my type rating on the mark. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, at that time I had, I had risen in seniority number till I was right up at the top of the co-pilots mm -hmm. list. And then I, my number came up, and they checked me out as captain. In Atlanta. In Atlanta, mm -hmm. and I first flew the Convair, and uh, Martin or the Convair. 
the con brand. I never, I never flew the wheel. I already gotten rid of the Martin. So you you were typed on the Martin, but your first trip was on the right. Conbear. First trip was on the Conbear, and uh, then later on I I worked my way up to captain on the Electra, mm -hmm. and then up on the uh, up on the DC nine. Mm -hmm. You fly captain on the seven hundred seven. No. That's why I never flew the. Uh, no, I never flew Captain on the 727. Yeah, because I flew Engineer on the Electra and uh, never flew the DC 9 at all. But uh, I was mainly a 727 guy. I managed to fly Engineer on the Electra too. Yeah, I also yeah. went to Engineer School on it. Right. Well, it sounds like you, and you were always based in Atlanta? Always based Man, in Atlanta. Man alive. You didn't have to commute or nothing. Never had to. Uh, that's, that's good. <laughs> well, let me go back in time for a split second here. Okay. When you were flying down there in Richmond, uh, Eastern had an airplane that landed in a cornfield. Right. Tiny. You remember that? Sure do. If I'm not mistaken, you wrote an article and we published it in the Repartee magazine about that. I lived right across the river from where that airplane made its J.B. Armstrong was the captain. And uh, I can't remember Bill. Uh, oh, what the heck was that boy's name? That uh, anyway, he lived in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Later, he was a co-pilot on it. Bill Henry? No, it wasn't Bill Henry. Still a part that verse. I remember the crew, but I can't remember who it was. I know J. B. Armstrong was the captain. He was the captain. Yeah. And uh, what happened to that airplane? Uh, they, why, did uh, they, why did they land at They got in a bad thunderstorm. And one of the hydraulic access doors came open. On the left wing, I think. Somewhere. Yeah. It was slamming open and shut, and they uh, they thought that they had been struck by lightning. Mm -hmm. Structural failure. They thought that they had had a structural failure, mm -hmm. failure, and they landed at the Curl's Neck Dairy Farm. Curl, C-U-R-L, Pocket S? No, no, C-U-R-L-E-S. C-U-R-L-E-S. Uh, Curl Neck. Snake Dairy Farm. Dairy Farm. And did a good job. Let uh, it gear up, didn't it? Didn't get, did anybody get hurt? And uh, you flew over it and saw it. It's in the bend of a river, wasn't it? My, uh, my brother and my cousin and I owned a, a 19... 32 E2 Cub that had a serial number of 36. And every day I'd go get that airplane and fly up to where they were dismantling this constellation. Mm -hmm. And when they got it dismantled, they put it on a barge mm -hmm. and hauled it back to Miami, put it back together and put it back on the line. Mm -hmm. And later, that same airplane caught on fire up in New York and burned up. Yeah. Some five or six years later, wasn't it? Quite a few years later. Did you ever fly, by this time you were with Eastern, weren't you? Right. Did you ever fly that airplane? I thought I did, but I didn't. Thought you did, but you didn't. <laughs> yeah. But you used to fly over that thing and look down at them, watching them taking it apart, right. putting it together, and putting it on a barge, and hauling it down all the way from Virginia down to Miami and put it back together again. Sure did. Well, well, let's see now. Uh, you stayed in while you were flying. You continued to do private aviation also too. Sure did. I did as much. I did as much private aviation as I did airline. Mm -hmm. Aviation. And uh, did you do it instructing and check airman type stuff? Uh, Never did for Eastern by no, the private. I instructed for years. Mm -hmm. And you got your CFI and all that? Got uh, got my CF double I before I ever before I ever came with Eastern. Mm -hmm. But you maintained it. Right. Still do. Still do. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you gave me an instrument check ride. Sure did. <laughs> that was an exciting thing. We found out that uh, one of the radios was 
with antennas were backwards, with brand new me and airplane and VW in the back seat. That was a wild ride that day, wasn't it? It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. I, said, I hadn't flown that, air, that kind of flying since uh, 1961 in pilot training. No DME, no nothing. That was a wild day. But he got me through it somehow. And, you know, otherwise, we couldn't have flown our airplane. And you know, BW and Clyde to this day have never gotten their yeah, recurrent yeah. back on this one. But we appreciated it. And he wouldn't let me pay it, wouldn't pay, so I took him out to lunch. That's the only payment I could give old Frank. <laughs> but Frank, uh, you still. Uh, uh, you guys sign off on yeah. their flight review. And I don't. Uh, I don't take on any primary students mm -hmm. anymore. But I give instrument checks and uh, and tailwheel training and mm -hmm. and BFRs to people that I know. Mm -hmm. I don't like to do it for anybody I don't know anymore. But mm -hmm. getting too old for it. Mm -hmm. Well, you've had a varied experience. How much flying time do you have? You uh, keep a log book up? I don't know. I think my log books, my log books with Eastern Airlines show about 22,000 hours. And my log book that I kept prior to coming with Eastern shows 1,700 hours. Mm -hmm. That's how much I had when I came with Eastern. So you can say you probably over twenty five thousand hours. Well, yeah. I wouldn't wanna wouldn't wanna say without mm -hmm. going back and count it, but uh Well, unfortunately you were not able to make it to eight sixty. No. We had a little airplane fall with us down at Bear Creek. My mm -hmm. son and I were were flying a swift. Swift and uh, the engine quit on it and uh on takeoff? on takeoff and we had to put it in the woods mm -hmm. and it, it broke me up pretty good it resulted in my having retired from Easter mm -hmm. what year was that 19 seems like that was 1979 I believe 79 okay so you had to take medical retirement then. took medical retirement Let's see, you were born, when were you born? 24. So you were about 55 when this happened? Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't retire until 82. Mm -hmm. So uh, I had enough sick leave accumulated with Eastern to keep me going until I retired at 80, in 82. Did uh, Ray Crumbly hit you on that? Ray Crowley did my bid sheet for me the whole time I was out. Mm -hmm. Ray Crumbly strikes again. He did that he for did a lot that of boy. people. I, I tell you, that guy is uh, really helpful. And, Ray, right and Ray has been a, mm -hmm. a good friend mm -hmm. all these years. But uh, you continued to fly uh, private uh, general aviation. You know, you had some problems, couldn't get back with Eastern, but you're still doing it. And you're still building airplanes. And you're building this, uh, what do you call it again? It's uh, a hatch. Hatch. H-A-T-Z. Right. And uh, I've got some pictures of it, and I'm going to uh, put those pictures in with the interview and uh, take it on down we've there. Been, uh, we've been building on this airplane for four years. Uh-huh. And believe me, I'll be glad to finish it. <laughs> glad to finish it. The next one I get, I'm going to buy it. If I live long enough, I'm going to buy it already built. I'm not going to build it. Right. Well, let's say you had a little setback, uh, back life spring. Well, uh, that, that, that three months ago, three I months guess. Three months ago, yeah. I think it was in, uh, Lord, when was that, March, April? Well, maybe. the uh, fly in was May the 10th. And so I recall. It, it, it had to be early in May when I had it. Yeah, it was in late, late, uh, might have been, might have been late April. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a little. Little, little bigger hard. problem, huh? And they uh, they put a couple stents in, but uh, I don't know. They want me to take a stress test to get my my medical back, and I don't know whether I'm gonna try to take a stress test or not. I might. I just haven't decided yet. Mm-hmm. 
Well, so what did the guys do? What did the guys do uh, for you? It happened on May 10th. They had a Frank Hancock first. At, you tell me about it. On my birthday. On your birthday. The fellas gave me a Frank Hancock birthday fly. Birthday. Well, they call it the first annual. That's right. Frank and Hank birthday fly-in. We had over a hundred people. Oh, I know. I was here. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, must have had fifteen or twenty airplanes. Yeah. And, had, and had two. Uh, two gyro. Also, like the gyro copters yeah. come in and almost didn't leave. Yeah. One of them almost didn't leave. He had to make a forced landing. He took off on the taxiway instead of the runway. But they got up, they just heard about it, uh, that Delta retired Pan Am pilot down here. They landed for fuel at his airport. He told them about it, so they came up here and got Amber. Remember that? But uh, Charlie, uh, Charlie Brown, Brown and, uh, and uh, John, Lauder John Lauder put this thing on. And uh, it was a fine time. The weather was great. Carrie, you were here. The weather was great. He had a great turnout. And somebody great. loaned him that great big fan. And <laughs> we had dogs and cooking hamburgers and cooking everything and grandsons and sons. And we just had a fine time, didn't we? It was a great day. Everybody took rides. That was when Carrie Sue said, wild horses wouldn't get her in that clip wing cub. <laughs> that clip wing cub, uh, I got my BFR in that thing in uh, 19... Well, it's 2000. Yeah. So I'm, I'm getting, it was a uh, time before last. The last time was 2002. That was year 2000. Got my BFR in that clip one. So, my, son, my grandson, Glenn, mm -hmm. has been helping me with this airplane, and I've got a partner in it. Uh, Forbes Matthews is my partner. Forbes is your Forbes partner? Forbes is my, he's my partner. I knew you had a partner, but where did I get... Now, he's not the, the partner in your hangar is uh, uh, Tom. No, Tom, uh... How long have you known him? <laughs> Tommy Thomason. Thomason. T-H-O-M-A-S-O-N? Right. Mm -hmm. Now, he's retired Delta. Right, isn't he? he's retired Delta. Okay, but Forge Matthews is a partner. And He's my partner. Well, I've never seen him down here messing with this airplane. It's always been Forbes. Your Forbes is the kind of fellow you could call on to do something technical. He's a retired uh, engineer from uh, Auburn University, and he's a he's a super super mechanic. Uh huh. So if you need something technical, mm -hmm. he can do it for you right now. But he's an equal partner with you? Yeah. Y'all on the airplane together? Mm -hmm. Well, and you're getting close to fly it, right? Yeah, getting close. And you're going to call me so I can come down and take pictures. I, I'm going to hold off on putting this thing together because I want a picture of, a, of a, you sitting in the cockpit or maybe... A, Taking off or something like that. You know what I'm talking about. Get those kind of pictures. Get down there and get a picture as you come by or something like that. Well, I'll tell you, you've, led a, you've had a hell of a life, haven't you? It's been a great life. It was good for my entire family. Uh -huh. My wife and all of my children. And it's even gone into my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren. Uh -huh. You mean the flying? They, the flying has been beneficial and is still beneficial to all of my, mm -hmm. my family. And Glenn, being your grandson, is probably your heir, I guess, on Glenn, a lot of this stuff. I'm going to leave everything pertaining to flying to Glenn. Mm -hmm. Just half of the hangar and the clip. Well, you own the clipping cook by like yourself, yeah. and half of the the hat. All it'll be clean. Well, I tell you, you couldn't have a nicer guy to leave it to. He's a super guy. Well, you know, young fellas, mm -hmm. it takes them a long time to accumulate what we've accumulated here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I figure that I can give him a start by 
Go ahead. He appreciates it. Just giving him my accumulation and he mm -hmm. won't have to start from scratch. He's in the computer business or something. He's in the computer programming business. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, he's a good pilot. Uh, that clip went yeah. good when he had me up there. I mean, uh, I really felt safe as could be. And uh, Carrie Sue over there just missing a good chance to go out and have some fun. <laughs> but it's nothing like flying in a plane like that. She got she this bonanza, you know. It's it's different. We've had like, that airplane since 1960. Mm -hmm. Al Harris was my partner in that mm -hmm. airplane. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only reason he isn't still my partner, and as far as anything goes, he's still my partner. Mm -hmm. But when he moved to Virginia, yeah, I bought went, him out of back, it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he went back before the strike and everything, didn't he? Uh, I don't know whether he did before the strike or not. I don't mm -hmm. know. Well, he retired before the strike, didn't he? I believe he did, yeah. yeah. Because he's, uh, he's older than you, I think, isn't he? He's, uh, I think he's a month younger than oh, I younger am. younger you yeah. are? That's a, you don't know Al Harris. Super nice guy. Super. Did a lot of good work with Alpha. And I never got to fly with Al either. But everybody that flew with him, like Harry Anderson and those guys, they just love, they just love Frank and Al Harris. That's how come this Frank Hancock flying was such a raging success is because he was, uh, so well thought of and does so much for so many people, including me, including me. Well, I'd, I would like to say uh, for the benefit of all of my friends on Eastern Airlines that it was a super life that I lived and it was great for a country boy. I come from a little old town up there in Virginia, I think, when I left. It only had 10,000 people, mm -hmm. and there was very few people from that town that flew to the airline, and I can count them. There was one, two, three, four, I think only five people that ever came from that town that flew for, for a major airline. Mm -hmm. From Oakwell flew for an airline. And I made a lot of good friends, and I'd like to mention a couple of them. Uh, uh, well, I don't know that I'll, I'll do that because I might leave somebody yeah, out. Yeah, that's the problem I would you wanna, do that. I would Who was, any of those five, besides, you were one of the five. I was one of the five. Al, Al wasn't from my team. Right, who were those guys? Uh, they didn't out with Eastern? No, no. No, but None Eastern. of them were with Eastern. Only you with Eastern. Yeah, you, you, so many people you can start saying yeah, something. Yeah, I, you know. I couldn't do it because mm -hmm. I don't know whether I could, whether I could remember all the people that I call good friends or not. Mm -hmm. I just don't know whether I could do it or not. But they've been, they've been super, and they were, they were great. And I don't call them pilots. I like to refer to Eastern Airlines as aviators. He, he makes that it, uh, distinction every time I it, have any, uh, in it. It was that way in the, the article. In when the, you when you talk about a pilot, when I used to be on the ship during the war, when we went into a new harbor, we had a pilot come aboard mm -hmm. to steer the ship into to Anchorage. Harbor pilot. So that's what I would term a pilot. And I term anybody that flies aviators. Aviators. That's why the Navy calls them aviators, too. Well, it's been fun doing this, Frank. It's, Everything, uh... It's, every been, it's been great, and I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to do it because I know that there are a lot of people that have had vastly more experience than I have that could probably <coughs> give you the same interview that you get here and it may be even better and after we hang up here i'm going to name a i'm going to name a few of them that i think you ought to interview yeah he's been trying to get me to interview all these other people and i want to interview <laughs> him <laughs> well I, i'm going to have to disagree with you on that i can't imagine anybody being more interesting to the group out there well it's been a it's been a great life mm -hmm. and aviation has dominated my life 
and still does to this day. Mm -hmm. I sometimes think I ought to quit and get out of it, but mm -hmm. I don't know whether I will or not. Mm -hmm. You won't delay row yet. I right? guess when right. I, you, the, the that I dirt my face off, right. that's when there I get out go. of it. Well, listen, thanks for doing this, and uh, yeah. it'll be in the winter issue, and I don't know if it's going to be a Q&A or I'm just going to write an article, but I want to take some more pictures before I leave. And I know I can't get a picture of you sitting in the cockpit. I really wish I could, but I'd like to go over next door. You can Glenn, or you let me in, and or you. I want to get some pictures of that clip wing sure, up. You do that. Would you like to take a ride? Would you in the like truck? To, in the in the cub. <laughs> oh, Carrie, it, Wild horses. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and just look at it, Carrie. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Jim. I certainly appreciate this, and uh, and I hope some of my boys don't laugh at me out there. Oh, they won't. Well, let me see if I turned out.